There's nothing wrong. Who's that who just left? Cecily. What does she want? Um, she wanted to invite me to a party. To a party? Do you always go down to the depths of despair when you're invited to a party? What did she say to upset you? Nothing. I... Well, I was thinking about Nina. How scary it must be for her all alone in South America. <laughs> you bet it's scary. But there's hope. Matt is down there. He's with Daisy and Palmer. They'll find her, bring her back safely. You're right. So, are you on your way to work? Yes, I am. And I'm late. Oh, well, then don't worry about me. Go ahead. Okay. Oh, one thing. Are you using that phone? Uh, yeah, but it, it's not important. Will you just give me one minute because I have to make a business call, okay? Well, if you want to talk business, why don't you use the office? No, it's not private. But I bet you anyway, it'd be a good thing to have Charlie wait an extra two minutes. What do you think, huh? some trade publications. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You learning anything new at this restaurant convention? <laughs> I'm learning how much I don't know. <laughs> so what are you up to today? Uh, well, first I have a, uh, to run an errand for Erica, mm -hmm. and then I'm off to conduct my recording session. All right. <laughs> What's on your agenda? Oh, I'm just going to stay here, read the, through these papers, try to get them organized. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, later on, you want to go for a walk in the village? Maybe we could drop in at a few galleries, maybe take in my favorite bookshop. Oh, well, I, uh, I really should do my work, you know. We could stop by a coffee house and have a cappuccino. It seems to me that that could be business-related. <laughs> you keep talking me into these things, don't you? <laughs> what time? Uh, I'm free at 2. Perfect. <laughs> well, I'll see you back here. Okay, excuse me, just one second. Hold on. Hello. Hi, Mom. It's Julie. Julie, hello, sweetheart. How are you? I'm fine. I just called to see how things were going. Oh, everything's fine now that you called. Uh, sweetheart, can you just hold on for one second? Sure. Thank you. Mark, Mark, you have a wonderful session. Thank you. And I will see you here at 2 o'clock, right? And, uh, no, you work too hard. Oh, you either. See you later. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm back. Mom, who are you talking to? Mark Dalton, you just drop by for a minute. Mom, I don't understand this. How could you do something like this? You know, Mother, you really missed your calling. You really should write a column, advice to the lovelorn. My only advice is to you, dear, because I know how terribly unhappy you are. Mother, I am far too busy to be unhappy. I mean, I am so fulfilled with my book. Travis is much more important than a book. You're playing a very dangerous game, my dear. You're, you're trying to reject him because you're afraid that he's going to reject you. Well, I really don't exactly see him beating down my door. There's no reason why he should under the circumstances. But he loves you. And the minute you begin to doubt that, the relationship can be ruined. Well, the facts don't exactly inspire confidence, do they? I mean, A, he has a tremendous reputation as a womanizer. B, he has shown absolutely no interest whatsoever in marrying me. And worst of all, C, he is still involved with that hideous woman, Barbara, his you, stupid ex-wife. You're using all of this as an excuse to keep your distance from him. The man loves you. Then why doesn't the man want to marry me? Well, perhaps he will in time when he, he feels that it's right for both of you. But you certainly can't expect a proposal on demand. Just because you want it. Well, it would certainly prove that he cares. Well, honey, you know that he cares. You have this crazy notion that, that, that a marriage license is a guarantee for a relationship. Erica, my dear, love comes from the heart. The rituals can all be taken care of later. 
You know that. You know that very, very well. All right. Maybe I know. Maybe... Maybe I was premature in bringing up marriage to him. And maybe I was wrong to run to Arizona. But I thought that maybe absence would make the heart grow fonder. Well, sweetheart, it doesn't always work that way. <gasps> Tell me about it. I taught him to get along without me. Well, that's not even true, sweetie. I, but don't you remember, he called in Arizona. I spoke to him. He left a message mm -hmm. that he loved you. Mother, well, messages are so impersonal. Well, what did you expect him to do? Chase you to Arizona? He could have come out. Oh, honey, wise up. You're the one who's putting the distance between you two. And if you don't stop it, you're going to lose him for good. At 11 o'clock, you've got an appointment with your barber. Oh, you're gonna have to cancel that, Barb. I need the time to work on the League of Women Voters no, speech. No, but you can't cancel with Jean-Pierre. I'll take my chances. What do we have at 12? 12 is a transatlantic telephone interview with the French dailies. Oh, oh, I'd like you to be on the line for that call, please, Barb. Well, I'll do my best, but I do have to go to Pine Valley first to check out this place called Oasis. It was uh, recommended for a fundraiser. Oh, Oasis. I know the place. It'll be fine. Okay. At 1, you've got a luncheon appointment with Fletcher and Fletcher. Oh, Fletcher and Fletcher. They sound like a medicine to me. Yeah, but you know they're the best media consultants in the business. Yeah, but the old man is a pill. I'd rather forego lunch altogether than have it with him. Which is exactly why I've arranged for you to have lunch with the more attractive member of the firm, his young, beautiful daughter, instead. Barbara, you deserve a raise. Yeah, throw in a golden parachute <laughs> while you're at it. All right. I have to get a move on this. Yeah, I've got some calls to make, too. Okay. Uh, Barbara, do you have a second? What else? Well, I'd just like to tell you that, uh... It's nice to be back to a normal working relationship with you. It's, it, I think it's rather healthy. We're both happy and content, and uh, we're doing good work. I got the message, friend. From now on, there won't be any more interference in regards to Erica, and no more remembrance of the past. Good. Hey, Mark. Hi. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. How are you, Mark? Super. Good, good. to see you. You look nice great. Nice to see you. Thank you. Uh, Erica asked me to, uh, drop these glossies over for the dust cover of her book. Oh, good. Let me take a look at them. You didn't have to go to the trouble of bringing these over yourself. She sort of sent them from Arizona. Well, she could have sent a note with it, though. Well, she's in Pine Valley. She what? She's in Pine Valley. She got there yesterday morning. She's been back for 24 hours? Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> awfully peculiar of her. Why didn't she get in touch with Travis herself? There will be another train tomorrow. You have no right to hold me like this. Please be calm, senora. I have instructions from my superiors to check all the papers of Nina Warner. Wait. There's got to be some kind of case of, of, of mistaken identity. I'm on a Red Cross mission, and I've already been to the border, and they've already told me that my papers are all in order. Show me your passport, please. Thank you, senora. It is in order. Then why am I under arrest? You are not under arrest. But I must observe the formalities. Red tape, senora. It will strangle us all. May I see your visa, please? It's attached to my passport. Thank you, senora. Now, may I inspect your certificate of vaccinations? What? You must be aware. Before entering our province, you must have vaccinations for malaria, typhus, and hepatitis. No, 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 no. No, no, no one ever told me anything about that. You see how good it is that I detained you? You do not want to break the law here. You will not be able to leave my custody without the vaccination. You know, there, there's someone who is just trumping up charges here who is just trying to delay me. It is for your own health, senora. Perhaps tomorrow a local doctor can come and help you. I can't wait.
wait until tomorrow. I'm on an urgent mission. What is your mission, senora? My husband is missing. He's in the interior, and I have to go and find him. You just have to let me go and look I for him. I cannot do that. It's a matter of life or death. If your husband is in danger, the government will investigate. No one is investigating, and that's why I'm going up there. No one is going to stop me. I cannot do that, senora. You have to let me go and look for him. You have to let me. You have to understand. Embassy, do whatever you want to check my papers, but please, you have to let me go and find my husband. You should... Come, I will help you. How can I do what, Julie? Mom, you're there with Mark. No, I am not here with Mark. We just happen to be staying at the same hotel. Mom, he was in your room. So what's wrong with that? Well, don't you know how that looks? Julie, may you tell me what has gotten into you, for heaven's sakes? I thought you understood that Mark and I were friends, nothing more. I do understand, but just imagine if the news got out in Pine Valley. Julie, this is not a news flash, and it wouldn't worry me in the least, because I have done nothing that I should be ashamed of. Mom, please, I I'd really feel better if you changed hotels. That would be an admission of guilt. Julie, I won't do that, not even for you. Mom, it's not just for me. Now, please, just change your mind before it's too late. Too late for what, Julie? What are you talking about? For Dad! Mom, listen, I know you don't care what most people think, but, but Dad's different. I mean, you know how he feels about Mark, and you know what his temper's like. Yes. Yes, I do. I know about both. It'll be the mistake of my life for me to kowtow to your father's temper right now. Mom, why ask for trouble? I... Julie, I am not asking for trouble. But I'd rather take a little risk of making a mistake than live my life in fear of your father's temper. Mom, I'm trying to respect the way you feel. But I just hope you're not sorry for it later. Yes, Maury, what can I do for you? I wanted to tell you the air conditioning men are here. They say they'll have it fixed in an hour. Well, thanks for letting me know. Thanks for leaning on them. I wouldn't have bothered you, but with Ellen and Mark in New York, I have my hands full. Did you say Mark? He had something to do with the jingle he wrote. I think they were recording it for a commercial. Well, yes, good for him. Uh, listen, Maury, Ellen asked me to give him a message. You know where he's staying? The Royal Plaza. I see. Well, thank you. Oh, look, I've got another phone call right now. I'll speak to you later. that she would come back and not even let me know about it. She got the glasses to you, now, didn't she? Let me see. Oh, they're stunning. Look at this. Uh, Barbara, would you, uh, would you give us a minute, please? Of course. Nice to see you, Mark. Good to see you. What's going on, Mark? Nothing. I was just doing Erica a favor. Didn't she ask you to deliver a message to me, to, to tell me anything? Uh, no. Why? Why? Because it doesn't make any sense. I mean, she, she's back from Arizona. She doesn't let me know. She doesn't drop me a note or call me. She sends you up here to deliver these pictures, something that she would normally do. I'd like to know why. So ask her. Did she meet someone in Arizona? Is that it? No. <laughs> Travis, she's crazy about you. Look, you sure as hell got a weird way of showing it. Look, Mark, hide and seek is not my game. I don't like it. Hey. Go easy on Erica, okay? Go easy on her. Who's pressuring her? Me? Well, her choices may not always be the best ones, but she's protecting herself. Protecting herself from, from who, though? Me? I mean, that's ridiculous. Perhaps. What happened between her and Jeremy? Did he do something to her to make her so insecure? No, uh... This, uh... 
Happened a long time ago when Erica was a kid. She would invent a fantasy world that she actually enjoyed a lot more than the reality, especially where... especially where her father was concerned. The problem being that this relationship created in her mind didn't actually pan out, and the father that she loved and worshipped simply abandoned her. I'm sorry, I didn't know that. I'm, I'm really sorry. I know what it's like to lose a parent. But... Mark, I'm not her father. No, she, she knows that, but what she feels and what she fears are two different things. I love her. I've told her that. I've tried... I've tried to show her that I love her. What more can I do? She's a little shaky right now. You weren't so keen on the idea of marriage, and that threw her. She'll come around. Just give her time and... and love. But, I don't know what... There's got to be more to it than that. Before I met her, it was like I was wandering down an abandoned street. Quiet and lonely. And then I turned the corner and I saw her and it was... like a fireworks display. Yeah, she's something. And what I adored about her... what other people don't see is that... she's real. And she, she needed me. And she still does. Yeah, but there's a gulf between needing someone and being needy. I mean, Mark, I can love her and show her how much I need her and support her and be with her. But for some people, it's not enough. Their neediness just gobbles you up. And I, I just can't deal with that. Maybe you should talk to her. See where you both stand. Like if anybody can be every and all things to her, Maybe you're it. If this is going to happen, Erica has got to believe it, too. Now, this time, uh, she's got to come to me. Buenos dias. Buenos dias, senor. Senora. I'm Palmer Cortland. I'm looking for um, uh, Captain Gomez. I am Captain Gomez. Pleasure to meet you, sir. Welcome to Carmelo. Uh, thank you. Thank you. This is Senor Cortland. Thank you, Senora. And Mr. Matt Connolly. I spoke to Senor Connolly by telephone. He made the arrangements concerning Nina Warner. Has she arrived yet? She arrived this morning, but I am sorry to tell you that we had a problem with this young woman. She escaped my custody while I was trying to detain her. What was the problem? While we were speaking, there was a distraction. She escaped my custody. Hey, what do you mean, where did she escape to? I do not know, senora. You let a helpless young girl escape? I've, I've never heard of such a It was thing. not my uh -huh. fault, senor. There was gunfire. What's the most stupid incompetence I have ever heard? I have a good mind to report you to the American Embassy. May I remind you, senor Cortland, that I do not work for the American Embassy. Put a lid on it for crying out loud. You're not supposed to tick off the people who are supposed to help us. He can't help anybody. Oh, you're upset. I'm upset, too. It isn't going to help anything if you stand here and act like the ugly American. Now, look, take my advice. Go in there and apologize. Oh, for Pete's sake. Captain Gomez, I'd like to have a word with you. I was so upset about my daughter, I said some very unpleasant things to you, and I offer my sincere apologies. I accept them, sir. Good, good. Now, could we get started on the search for Nina, please? Uh, Captain Gomez and I will take care of that. Uh, Daisy, why don't you take Palmer back to your house? Wait, you both wait, need her wait a minute. I insist on Palmer, coming along. No, 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 look, you don't speak the lingo. Don't you don't know anything. I'll just alienate everyone. Wait, 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 take off. Honestly. Look. That's what I got here. Anything? Uh, 
I hope I did not frighten you, senor. No, no, I... When I frightened, I, just, I guess I was a little bit scared before. Oh, the noise outside was nothing but firecrackers. I set them off myself to create a... How do you say? A diversion? Exactly. Really? I saw the Capitan Gomez was trying to hold you when he had no right, and I wanted to help you. Why? Because I could see the tears in your eyes when you talked about your husband. Uh. Made me very sad to see a beautiful lady cry. I want to help you all I can. Believe me, senora, you can trust me. I do. I, I do believe you, Paco. Thank you. Would you like to sit down? Yes, I would. Thank you. I speak good English, huh? Yes. Actually, yes, you do. I will hide you from Capitan Gomez. And I will get information about the banditos. Paco, the only thing that we really need is I need to find someone who can help me bring me into the interior, okay? I know that my husband is still alive. I also believe the banditos would not kill an American doctor. I think they are holding them to treat their own people. But you must be very careful with the jungle. It is very dangerous. It's just something that I have to do. There is another danger. The banditos may take your prisoner. And they are very bad men. They do not respect the woman. Well, I'll just have to take that chance. Now, Paco, do you know someone who can help me get into the interior? Someone who can be my guy? See, but they will cost you a great fortune. These supplies and loans will cost you much money. It doesn't make any difference. I have a lot of money. No, thank you. And I'll do anything that I have to do. You are a very brave lady. <laughs> Senora, if you will permit me, I will be your guide myself. I grew up in the hills. I know them well. All right, all right. What choice do I have? Oh, the police are after me. Come on, let's go then, okay? First, I must purchase our supplies. Is this enough? It is too much. Please, take these back. Are you positive? I see that you have a great deal of medicine in your bag. Yes. Do you plan to sell it, senor, in case you need more money? No, no, it's mine. Rest while I go to purchase the supplies. The trip will be long. You will need strength. Oh, you're right. I am exhausted. You will be safe here. Thank you, Paco. I will take care of everything. children will continue in a moment. Oh, there you are. Polly, are the 83 reports still on the balcony? Yes, they are. Thank you. Good morning, Polly. Hi, Erica. Long time no see. Yes. I'm sorry he's not in. Oh. Well... Bad timing again. <laughs> but I know you know his schedule. Where is he? Um, I'm not sure. There was some confusion about a luncheon. Oh, Polly, come on. Are you much too efficient to be confused? Hello, Erica. Erica. Well, Barbara, my goodness, I didn't know you were there. But there you are, hovering as usual. How was your trip out west? Uh, it was incredibly productive. Polly, you were about to tell me Pardon what Pardon me for speaking is. up, but I hate to see you put Polly on the spot. I don't believe she's supposed to give out that information. Excuse me. Thank you, Polly. Mm -hmm. Not that I was speaking to you, Barbara, but since you have intruded, then let's just clarify something right now. From this moment on, you will never, ever be able to stop me from seeing Travis again. Your little schemes, your shenanigans simply will not be tolerated. My schemes, my shenanigans. Oh, Erica, compared to you, I'm a rank amateur. Oh, come on. Stop this little petty arguing with me. I will thank you very much not to come over here and cause any more trouble. Truth to tell, Erica, I'd hope we'd seen the last of you when you flounced off to Arizona. Oh, well, then you are in for a major disappointment. Because I am back in Travis's life to stay. So stop the silly, petty little evasions. Just tell me where he is. Well, if you must know, he's lunching at Kirby's. But he did say he did not want to be disturbed. Oh. Well, since it's me, he won't mind. Wait, <laughs> uh, uh, 
as he gets a load of his date. <laughs> hmm. You know, uh, too much sun is really bad for you. I'm trying to get a sexy bronze tan on my face. Oh, excuse me. You know, Dag, uh, you want to do something really fun? Huh? You want to help me mop up? Uh, no. Thanks a lot. I have to break my car getting here. I have to find you right away. What? What is it? What's wrong? You have to drop everything, okay? Get over to Julie's right away, because she's about to fall off the deep end, and you're the only one who can stop her. That's her problem. It's none of your business. Cecily, what is it? Look, Julie will give you the details. All I can tell you is that, just by accident, I found out something about Julie's mom. What? I swear I never intended to tell her, but... I slipped, and she wouldn't let go until I told her everything, and now she blames me for telling her, and I wouldn't blame you if you were mad at me. Cecily, you know, if you did anything to upset Julie, I will kill you. I swear Charlie, I will. Charlie, look, yell at me all you want later. Just get out of here, okay? She's in pain, and she needs you. Just, I'll cover her, okay? Go. Cecily, what are you pulling now? Dagny, it's scandalous. I found out that Julie's mother and Mark Dalton are both in New York. And I told Julie. Did you try and hurt her? Well, why shouldn't she know that her mother's fooling around? Anyway, I didn't know that she was going to freak out and then try to blame me for everything. Cecily, you should have kept your mouth shut. Julie and Charlie are both going to blame you now. Well, it's not fair. Oh, that's life. People always blame people for bringing them bad news. All you've done now is bring them closer together. Well, that's the way it looks now, but... See, that's why I came over here and told Charlie. So, well, maybe I even made a few points with him. How? Well, he'll think that it was sweet of me to be concerned about Julie. Oh, don't count on it. Cecily, what are you going to do if this makes them tighter than ever? And you can never break them up. I don't know. I hate to admit it, but I don't know. Dagny, I've already tried everything, and I'm really scared. What if I do end up total, a total loser after all, huh? It's no surprise, come on, let's get your stuff. We're getting out of here. What? What? Why do I have to get out of here? Let's pack your suitcase. Ross, what's the matter? What's wrong? No, I'll tell you what's wrong. I'm ending that little affair. Little affair you're having with Mark Dalton. My dad finds out that my mom and Mark are staying in the same hotel. The worst could happen. It could ruin everything. Honey. I think you're taking this just a little bit too seriously, all right? You know your mom is not doing anything wrong. And there's no reason for your dad to blow up about nothing. It's not nothing, Charlie. They may not be having an affair, but there's more to it than that. I wouldn't blame my dad for losing it. I would. Look, just because your mom and some guy are staying in the same hotel, that's no reason for divorce. Charlie, you have to see it the way my dad does. My mom always treats Mark like he's a special guy. He's hung up on her and she just encourages him. He's always caused trouble. She just stay away from him. Yeah, well, I wouldn't call your dad exactly Mr. Clean, you know. I mean, he's done a lot more than just encourage. But whatever happened, he ended it. And that's exactly what my mom should do. She should end it with Mark, but instead they just get closer and closer. Well, don't forget they were married at one time, all right? And they, they still like and they respect each other, that's all. Charlie, I don't even know what she's liked about him in the first place. Come on, everybody likes Mark. Well, I didn't like him from the moment I met him. Honey, give him a break, all right? Remember, he was on drugs back then. Oh, he's always got a problem that he needs help with, right? 
I think he's selfish, and I think he's a taker. It really sounds like you hate him. Charlie Mark is a troublemaker. And if he wrecks my parents' marriage, I'm never going to forgive him as long as I live. How dare you say this to me? Stop it. Stop it. I am not having an affair with Mark. Is he staying at this hotel? You have no right to accuse me. Is he staying at the hotel? Hundreds. I'm not talking about a hundred people. I'm talking about you and Mark. Now, how long has this honeymoon been planned? Long time? Or did it just happen at the spur of the moment? This is disgusting. This is absolutely disgusting. It's not disgusting, disgusting at all. What's disgusting oh, about it? I've been watching you for a long look, time. Look, I cannot help what goes on in your sick little mind. I don't have a sick little mind. I'm talking about your piano player. He's in love with you, right? He thinks you're his mother, his savior, everything. Now, what's stop. it going to be now? Are you going to be his wife? You have got to stop this. He is not in love with me. And if you won't believe me, that's your problem. It's not a problem, Ellen. Ellen, it is not a problem. I've been watching you two for a long, long time. Your actions speak better than your words. Oh, you spend half your life with him. What is it, Ellen? You falling in love with him, too? This is re absolutely ridiculous. I would never do this. How did you know he was here in the Who's first place? Who's to know? He knows you're in New York, and he chases you here. Now really let me in on the secret. Have you been sleeping together how long? Or has it just happened last night? How dare you? You get out of here. You get out of here this minute or I'm going to call the police. You can call the President of the United States. You get just your say, head. What you do you mean? I'm not said. stopping. What are you doing? Just stay right there. You've got to stop this. What is the matter with you? Leave my clothing alone. What's the matter here? No, you are not going to touch my clothing. Ellen, Ellen, sit down. You've got to Ellen, stop it. Ellen, stay there. Ellen, I said stop it yourself. Move on. You are out of control. What's going on with you, Roy? Stop it. Stop it. I'm not going to hurt you. Stop it. I don't want to hurt you. Okay? I don't want to make my job look easy, Travis, but it is such a pleasure to do PR for you. You're a natural for the media. You're wealthy, famous, a can-do overachiever. But there's one problem. Oh, what's that? You're a handsome bachelor, and almost nobody except the whole world is interested in handsome bachelors. Well, I enjoy being a bachelor, and I'm not ready to change. But you haven't been seen with Erica lately. Is there any particular reason? No, no particular reason. But now that you bring it up, I want uh, our public relations in future to avoid my personal life. Your wish is my command. Do you want us to stop linking you with Erica? That's not a bad idea. Well, does this mean that she's slipping out of your personal life? No comment. Well, if she does, there are plenty of candidates to replace her. I might even get in line myself. Well, I'm flattered. Just to show you how serious I am, I'll ask you out tonight. Barbara Carroll is giving a big benefit at Nexus. It's going to be the biggest event. Oh, comes my guest. Well, it, it sounds like fun, but I've got a lot of work to do. Work will always be there. You should hear some good music. It'll nourish your spirit. You're tempting me. Well, how can I sweeten the pot? Do you have a uh, private number? For you, I do. Nice little hacienda you got here, Daisy. It's quaint. Quaint my foot. Maybe it's not Cortland Manor, but this is, uh, this is lovely. It's wondrous, and I happen to adore it. I understand the pool boy's a little overage. Don't you get lonely? Cute. Mm. Yeah, I get lonely. Oh. About once a day. Oh, boy, you look tired. So why don't you stretch out and sleep? Oh, no, no, I couldn't possibly sleep. Where could she have gone to, Daisy? I don't know, but this is a small community. Matt's not going to have any trouble finding a tall, gorgeous, blonde North American. Mm, it's not guaranteed. She's very resourceful. She could sneak off by herself. God knows what would happen. Don't talk like that, okay? Like you said, she's resourceful. She'll survive uh, this. No, she's also diabetic. Who knows if she'll get the proper medicine, proper food down here in this godforsaken place. Oh, could you cut out with the doom and gloom? Nina has always taken care of herself, and she will take care of herself now. She's also under emotional stress. That doesn't 
doesn't mean that she is not going to take care of her diabetes. It doesn't matter what she's going through. I'm sure she's brought everything with her to take care of her health. Come on. We're depressing one another. Come on. Have some lemonade. Mm. back with the supplies when I was asleep. Oh. Oh. 